What is up everybody, you're watching Haji TV. So in this video, I'm just gonna show you guys how to pick your main hero and when and where to pick certain heroes and what to do with all that and make sure you're getting the most out of your hero selection. So basically, you just wanna pick a main hero. I chose my most powerful one, which is the legendary assassin that you get from the limited edition. He's got power level 44, he's just a beast, he kills stuff like super fast, and I love assassins and how they play. So basically you want to main something that you enjoy playing the most, and you're going to have a lot of fun playing at pretty much all times. So some people may like constructors who are basically just building bases, making sure traps are up to par, and defending the objective. Otherwise you got outlanders who are really good at kind of just grabbing materials around the world, and they have lots of mobility. Soldiers are just really good at combat, getting the combat score for your team. So it all just kind of depends on what you're trying to do. Now, I main Assassin, but it's not the only hero I play. I do have a secondary position, which is the Soldier there. As you can see, it's 29 power level. Not as good as my main, but it's still pretty good. So what you want to do is you want to beef up your main guy as much as possible. So if we go to the upgrade selection... I use most of my hero XP on the Assassin Ken character here, as you can see it's two stars, I even evolved it. Make sure that one of them is at least beefy enough so that you can do the higher level missions with other people and not be fucking useless. So you want to be contributing to the team with at least one good character. Now, sometimes I like to switch it up and sometimes I need to do other things. So I like Assassin just because I don't have to spend ammo, he mainly uses melee weapons, mostly swords, as you can see I get bonuses from swords. Now. It also depends on what your hero is good at, like I think the Assault Headhunter, she gets yeah headshot damage multiplier, so it all depends on what you're trying to do, so using snipers with her and assault rifles is really good, or if you're using, say for example, uh, let's take a look at power base Nox, he's really good for melee, as you can see he has the passive build speed, reduces building costs, it's kind of just staple across all of the builders, but if you look at his first ability here, it says 162.7 energy damage, damage type is considered plasma as well as energy, critical hits with hardware, melee weapons, trigger, kinetic overload, so even if you choose constructor or assassin, you want to pick one that kind of reflects your playstyle, so I personally don't necessarily like Nox just because of his playstyle using hardware melee weapons, and I do have a legendary melee weapon that's a hardware uh, class, but it's just not that enjoyable because it swings so slow, and I don't like that. I like to be fast, up in their face, killing everything in like two seconds. It's not that he's bad, it's just it's not my playstyle. So try to pick one of each class that's kind of your playstyle and you can enjoy, but also pick one that's your main. I, personally, I say to do either Outlander or Assassin because you can mainly focus on using melee weapons and you can grab ammo for say like soldiers or the constructors depending on which constructor and soldier you choose not that it's hard to get ammo but sometimes when you're doing like a higher level mission it's extremely hard to keep up with your ammo like i went to a 15 power level mission with um with like a 20 power level guy i think it was this outlander here which is my main outlander but it was not really the easiest mission in fact we almost lost they broke through our defenses at the very end almost getting to our atlas but during that mission we also ran out of ammo very very fast because we just couldn't kill things quick enough so i say using assassin and outlander is the best that's just my opinion if you can manage your ammo very well then go for it with soldier but that's just my you know personal preference and just my kind of two cents on what to choose so to make sure you're getting the most out of your hero, what you want to do is first look at their abilities. So the first one I have is Throwing Stars, which costs energy. So every 50 energy I have, I can throw Throwing Stars, and it'll do 242.7 damage with each star, which is quite a bit. So I like to use that on, like, bees and all those ranged people, just because I don't want to get too close to them, or, like, the big Purple Hulk guys or the Hank Hill guys. So I like to play my Assassin most of the time, just because when I'm hunting treasure or I'm getting stuff, I can get to places that are a lot harder to reach without the double jump so my mantis leaps allows me to get like onto a roof without having to climb through or build ramps which can help cut down on building costs because a lot of missions have building limits and you want to get that extra gold medal for a better tier box at the end so that's another incentive to play the assassin there but as you can see it says reduce the sword combo and later on he gets assassination which increases the damage dealt by swords by five percent so you want to be using swords don't use any other melee weapons if that's like the case with your character sometimes it's assault rifles or pistols whatever just make sure you're using what gives it the best bonus you don't want to be using things that aren't necessarily the best like maybe you have a legendary assault rifle but your character gets bonuses from 
like pistols so maybe the epic pistol is better than the assault rifle but you just kind of have to calculate that out at that point because sometimes the pistol will be better than the legendary assault rifle all right so after you've done that you selected a main and like kind of picked your secondaries and all of the classes you're going to want to go over here into the squad bonus. So what happens here is if you go into the upgrade log again on these characters, as you can see here, it says endurance training increases maximum energy by 8% when it's in the support slot. And if you go over here, you can see it gives me improved lucky stars, 40% extra headshot damage. So having these guys in here is very, very good for this character. Now I switch out maybe the soldier for a different one. Uh, if I were playing Outlander or something, but what you want to do here is if you're playing your main, have your two best support characters here with the best stats. You want to have these people leveled up too. So this is kind of your, you know, priority character here, and then these are going to be your next priority, whatever characters you're going to have in here besides like your main heroes. Because what happens here is once you put them into these slots, once you unlock them in the skill tree, it gives 20% of their stats to your primary hero. So 20% of this character's stats and this character's stats gets boosted onto the main hero. So you're getting a big boost to your fort stats, which is how powerful your character is going to be so make sure your best people here are in here and if you have like characters that have extra bonuses for a specific skill for this main hero definitely swap them in there too and try to beef them up with hero xp as much as you can all right next we're going to go to the skill tree so first off it's pretty linear all the way up until you reach this point and once you reach this point in the skill node tree and of course you're going to want to just grab all these they are they're all helpful you want them all so i made the assassin so i went down the skill tree and locked all these points and eventually you get to the point where you can evolve up to a two star ninja now this is good you want this as soon as possible because you're going to be pumping in hero xp to your main he's going to hit max level at level 10 and it's going to stop until you get this node and then at this point you can evolve that main hero and then you can unlock a second tier of abilities at second star his stats get a huge boost so you want to grab that as soon as possible and then maybe go for your secondary one i went for soldier second and i got these two star evolution i haven't evolved it yet but i still got all the boosts and stuff for that person plus you get all these gadgets like this is the air strike and then you have the adrenaline rush which heals you and over here is the loot supply drop so just kind of go by ear. I re highly recommend going for your main first is definitely going to be the best thing. And then after that, you can kind of just fill in whatever. If you have a secondary or if you just want to beef up your party because there's party nodes and offense nodes. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you go up. Yeah, if you go up first, it's kind of like fortitude and offense. So if you want extra damage, otherwise, if you want resistances or looting ability, just go down here. So it's all kind of just depends on what you want to do after that first node, but you can just kind of play that part by ear. So after the normal skill tree, you have the research tier one, which I'd say is just kind of like complementary skills. It's not like too, too important. It's just kind of like, do you want more tankiness or do you want more offense? The only time I'd say this is really specific is if you're playing constructor as a main and you kind of go in like AFK build and it's very loose. AFK builds kind of like you're a constructor, but you're building just around the base and you're focusing on traps and stuff. So if you want to do that, I'd start from the middle and go down here and you're getting tech points, which tech points give you better ability damage, better trap damage, and it just makes like all the buildings and traps a lot better. So if you want to go that route, definitely go down here, which I think I was starting to do. But yeah, other than that, um, if you just want more combat points, more damage, go top left, that's offense and eventually you'll get to party offense and try to grab these backpack size ones right here in the middle just because backpack size is really nice you'll be able to grab more stuff while you're looting everything especially if you're maining outlander or assassin it's very very nice to have extra backpack space like i think i'm up to 70 now other than that i mean if you want to get tankier it's just the right side you get resistance and fortitude and then there's offense on the left side so it all just depends on what you're playing so next we're going to go here and look at schematics so as you can see here, I have a few items favorited just because I don't want to ever recycle them by accident because if I press R, sometimes it just puts a thing into recycle immediately and I've definitely recycled a few things I did not want to. So all you have to do to favorite an item is go into the upgrade inspect and just press F. It'll toggle, toggle favorite. So I just press F there. The heart disappeared. I press it again and the heart there. And that just keeps it from being able to uh, be recycled while you're doing all that because you want to recycle all the duplicates like... Here I have a shitty 
heal pad. I guess I can't recycle that one, but if you have any duplicates or greens, sometimes I like to just recycle those. It all just depends on what you're doing. I, I have epics and legendary melee weapons, so I don't really worry about that too much. So I play the assassin. So for example, I have this main weapon, which is the Copper Founder's Night Cleave. I go into upgrade and I just keep pumping it filled with schematic XP. So it gets the damage bonuses and then eventually I'll be able to evolve it. So I'm like 800 away. You get bonuses based off what level it is. So right now it has 45% crit damage and it has energy damage and it it's effective against like all elements and stuff that's pretty much all that does pick one weapon so say you're a soldier you have an assault rifle pick a really good assault rifle like i have this one the founder's bearcat it's a shotgun and you just upgrade the crap out of it and it's just going to be your main gun you want to have like one really good gun the same thing with your heroes you want to have one really good hero you just keep beefing it up with xp until it's like godly and that'll just help you out a lot especially when you're in that last defense on any mission but yeah, once you get past like the very initial stages of anything, you can just kind of beef up whatever. Because I have certain weapons I only use with the soldier. I have certain weapons I only use with the assassin. But I started out with this uh, sword right here. So just focus on what's good for your main hero at the time. And then you can worry about everything else later. So after all that, after you've got your weapon situated, you got a main picked out. You're gonna to want to go to survivor squads and here is where you get some like extra little bonuses so as you can see from this emt squad i get 57 fortitude and 13 team fortitude so if i go in here how you do this is you click on the squad and you want a leader whose profession matches the squad title so this is an emt squad as you can see it has the cross for healing and he has the little profession here that says he's a doctor or a healer or whatever so you want that to match this icon up here because then you'll get a bigger bonus and you're going to want to use your survivor experience to beef up the leader a lot and then i'm pretty sure that these squad members don't really it doesn't really matter whether or not they beef up your thing like if you match the profession with their profession the leader's profession i don't think that's necessarily important but i do know is like you see this heart that's extra fortitude so if you match up a couple of the hearts you do get a health bonus as you can see down here it says one of two so if i had a second one with a heart i get a five percent health bonus or if i had another one of these trap guys i'd get a trap durability bonus by eight percent so but yeah that's not terribly important just try to match up the lead survivor with the actual squad you know definition just because It'll help you out a lot, It'll give you a bigger boost, and then obviously you're going to want to use your survivor XP like I'm about to use to keep them in tip-top shape, and it'll give you a better boost. So as you can see, I now have 92 fortitude there, and I got an extra bonus to my normal fortitude. And same thing with all the rest. You'll unlock them as you go along. You don't start off with like four of them. you got to kind of work your way through it. So that's pretty much all I want to talk about hero selection and picking mains and when to pick other heroes, when and where. But... I know I talk a little fast, so if anything was confusing, just drop a comment down below. I'll try to help you as much as possible. Otherwise, I can make another tip video or keep making other tip videos. And if you like this one, then let me know down below. Drop a like, leave a comment, all that good stuff. And I'll try to make some more tip videos or tr tips and tricks and how to find things. I'll probably make a looting, uh, maybe specific hero guides. I don't know. Just let me know if that's something you'd be interested in, and I'll definitely try to make something like that. And then also, this is the last chance you have to sign up for the giveaway. I'm going to be drawing winners at midnight tonight, and then I'll announce them in a video tomorrow. So I'll leave a link in the description of the video you can comment on for a chance to win a standard copy of Fortnite. Basically, all you have to do is go to that video, drop a comment saying you want to enter, and then subscribe to the Haji TV channel. And a couple people have said I'm lying. I'm not going to actually give out the keys. And I know a lot of people do scummy things like say they're giving it out and then give it to a bot or just sell the key off and say they gave it away or something but i don't have any reason to keep keys or give it to a bot that's stupid and i don't need extra money because i work so but yeah a chance to win a 40 dollar value standard edition two free keys all you have to do is leave a comment and subscribe to my channel and you'll be entered and it is going to be random i'm going to use a random generator based off comments and then i'll see if you're subscribed to my channel but anyway thank you everyone so much for watching i hope this helped you out or will help you out if you plan on getting the game in the future always remember to keep that pimp hand strong and i'll see you in the next video